Good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me? Or do I need to shout louder? A uh, few notices for you this morning in no particular order. Um, we have the different day occurring on the 26th of April, so not that far away, between 10.30 and 3.00. Uh, in which it, you are invited to come and see uh, those of us who are going to be offering you tips and wrinkles in crafts, newspapers, tea and cake. So uh, be sure that to be here. The cost is for £5 for lunch and the, you'll be pleased to hear also that the rest of the day is free. But we are looking for volunteers. You'll notice in the newsletter of the day in bold print uh, that drivers of the day and others who would like to help are being welcomed and if you want to see Ron about that you'd be very uh, very welcomed I'm sure. Um, artists in Porchester this is something that we've been particularly um, plugged to push for you uh, on the 29th of April seven o'clock in the church and Brian will be giving a talk on the artistic heritage of Porchester and Kate will be up there for the um, for, for the exhibition as well also several artists who are exhibiting their work um, will be a, around to speak to and um, witness their their handwork 10 pound a ticket um, the, the notice says that uh, the proceeds for this evening will be used to finance the um, exhibitions w w sorry proceeds of this will, will be used to finance the exhibitions but also on the restoration of some of the headstones that are in the, in the graveyard for those uh, involved. Uh, personally, I'd also like to mention that on the 8th of May, we're going to have the Falklands 40 um, celebrations, if that's the right word. Uh, having been down there myself, it wasn't uh, a great deal to uh, shout about at the time, but we did when we came back. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, join us in that on the 8th of May. We will have a short service um, in the churchyard in the southeastern corner. One correction I would like to point out for the notices is regarding the Falklands 40, it refers to Petty Officer Sullivan. He was actually Chief Petty Officer Fulham Sullivan in the southeastern corner. So let's make sure we, we get that right at the time. Interestingly, um, I had the fortunate um, opportunity to um, meet one of his shipmates two days ago, um, who was on board Sheffield at the time when Sheffield was struck and sunk in the South Atlantic and uh, he will be attending the service as well on the 8th of May. I've asked him if he would like to read out his poem that he composed and you'll see if you go to that stone now in the southeastern corner that is hanging off that stone. Very touching. Whether he's up to it on the day is another thing but his sister Caroline who might be here. Caroline anybody? Is Caroline here? No. Uh, his sister Caroline may read out that poem. If not Guess who it falls to? <laughs> okay, a few moments of silence while you think about the forthcoming service.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Do please sit down. It's really good to see so many of you this morning on this beautiful bright day, even though the wind is biting cold. And I hope you all enjoy our worship this morning, this second Sunday of Easter, typically known as Low Sunday, of course, when people stayed away from church, but I'm glad so many of you have turned up this morning. And a particular welcome to um, Bridget Codling, whose husband's ashes we're going to inter in our labyrinth after this service. Um, her husband John died in 2020, when of course there was no opportunity to have a proper goodbye and a funeral. So our prayers are with Bridget and all the family today and we will be doing that immediately following this service. No children to disappear today and so we sing our prayer of preparation. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and a true heart. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help us. us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help us. God of love and power, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and our collect for this, the second Sunday of Easter, we pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, starting at verse 27. When the temple police had brought the apostles and made them stand before the council, the high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood onto us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up to Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and saviour, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail, so it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and with his love encourage us to take up his commission to be his disciples here on earth and to do his will. Amen. Amen. In today's gospel reading, we hear of the disciples hiding in the upper room with the doors locked, afraid to go outside. It says they were hiding from the Jews, but as they themselves were Jews, this does not mean they were hiding from everyone, but those responsible for having Jesus executed. They were afraid the same fate may be awaiting them afraid for their lives and their futures. They had also been told by Mary Magdalene that she had seen the risen Lord, and Peter, with another disciple, had been to the tomb, seen it empty, 
and the grave clothes lying there and believed. Perhaps they were also a little afraid to face Jesus after their desertion and failings. Yet despite the locked doors, Jesus appears amongst them and immediately dispels their fears by greeting them with the words, peace be with you. This expression carries the sense of the Hebrew greeting, shalom, a blessing that connotes more than tranquility, but also a deep and holistic sense of well-being, the kind of peace the world cannot give. Perhaps we can hold that thought in our minds and hearts when we share the peace with one another today. Despite having appeared before them, defying walls and locked doors, Jesus shows them his wounds, that he is flesh and blood, not a ghost or an apparition. He breathes into them the gift of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth will teach and remind them all that of what Jesus has said to them and guide them into all truth. This is also a reminder that in Genesis 2.7, God formed man from the dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And in Ezekiel 37, 1-10, God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. Only through his breath and the gift of the Holy Spirit can we truly live in Christ. Jesus says, if you forgive people their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus is not giving them power to decide whose sins can be forgiven and those who will not. Only God can do that. But he is saying that as his disciples, it is our duty to spread the word and love of the Lord. Those who choose to come and abide with Jesus and know him will be released from their sins. Those who choose to turn away will be stuck in their unbelief and their sins retained. So long as we do our part, we are not at fault. For those who do not want to know, Matthew 10, 14 says, if anyone will not welcome or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust from your feet. Thomas was not present with them in the room I miss seeing Jesus. Have you ever thought how strange it was that he was not present? Perhaps he was the only one not afraid to go out and had been fetching supplies. Or perhaps he needed some time alone to think about all that had happened. He has been forever known as Doubting Thomas, when all he wanted was to have witnessed what they had seen and received the gifts they had. Having been the only one to be brave enough to go out, Jesus appeared to them and not to him. He must have been feeling somewhat disgruntled and thought they were playing a trick on him. But Jesus comes a second time, a week later, when Thomas is present and shows him his wounds and allows Thomas to put his hand in his side. Thomas says, my Lord, my God, recognizing his divinity. Jesus' next words look beyond Thomas, across the centuries to us gathered here today. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus 
John writes, this is the purpose of this gospel, that those who may not have seen may believe this testimony. When in fear, we can hide and lock our doors, but Jesus will always find a way in and be with us in our fear, doubt, pain and confusion, bringing peace and breathing the Holy Spirit into our anxious lives. Jesus keeps on coming back in the word, the water, the bread, the wine and the Holy Spirit. He gives us the peace and strength to go out into the world to spread his gift of life to those in desperate need. Do you have any sense of being sent? Not just to attend church, but to be active. Fellowship on a Sunday holds us all together, but what happens between Monday and Saturday? How is your life better for coming to faith? Pray for the strength and guidance to share your testimony with others. Be a fisherman and cast your net, or a shepherd looking for the one that got away. Do any of you here remember the TV series Mission Impossible? It always began with a tape playing which described a harrowing mission and would end by saying, your mission, if you choose to accept it, and finally this tape will destruct in five seconds. That was in 1966. I was seven. <laughs> well, if you follow Jesus, you're already on the team. Like the disciples, you too have been commissioned to play a role. And some of us are still trying to figure out what that role is. Prayer is a good place to start. Faith can come to us in different kinds of ways. For Mary Magdalene, it was seeing the empty tomb and Jesus speaking to her. The disciples see him. And for Thomas, it was touching his wounds. Give some time to think about your journey to faith and how it has grown and developed. The commission of Christ has also become known for some as the charter of the church. Jesus needs the church. The church is a mouth to speak for Jesus, feet to run his errands and hands to do his work. The church also depends on Jesus. We need him to send us, give us a message to take, power and authority to back his message. We depend on Jesus as he depends on God and serve him with obedience, humility and love. Looking back to Thomas's absence the first time Jesus appeared, was he out buying supplies or was he suffering alone? At such times, we need to be in the company of fellow Christians, even just to sit in silence in the presence of another. For where two or more are gathered, Jesus will be with them. Being a Christian and apostle is not always going to be easy. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, 27 to 32, that we heard this morning, we hear how the Sanhedrin tried to stop the apostles teaching the word of Jesus. They were men of courage and principle who would not have risked their lives for something that was not true. They remained obedient and steadfast in their belief against all cost and circumstances. They didn't question if it was safe, but is this what God wants me to do? 
the Pharisee Gamaliel spoke up on their behalf. He said, if it is not God's will, they will fail. But if it was, nothing could stop it. The apostles were the voice and hands and feet of Jesus. Over the centuries, there are many who have tried to stop it without success. Strangely enough, it was the Romans who were so opposed to Christians who were inadvertently to help spread the word. Famous for building roads, they provided the ways and means for the apostles to travel to far-flung nations of the world. Through their provision of new roads, improved trade routes and access to ports, where ships would carry them to far off places. God is the word and he will have the final word. Amen. And so we stand to confess our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. The response after our prayers is, hear our prayer of thanks. And we respond, we thank you, Lord. So hear our prayer of thanks. We thank you, Lord. As we still live in the period of Easter, we recognize the sacrificial love of Jesus, our redeeming Savior Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. We thank you again for the price you paid to pay our sin debt at Calvary. Hear our prayer of thanks. We thank you, Lord. We remind ourselves how you were bound, flogged, stripped. A royal robe was draped on you. A crown of thorns, thorns the very symbol of sin 
in God's word from the Garden of Eden. A crown of thorns on your sinless head, the staff and the mocking, how you were hit about the head, how the Supreme Council tested you and your dignity throughout, and risen how you inspired Peter and the Apostles. Once fierce and behind locked doors, but now emboldened by the risen Lord to preach repentance and forgiveness. We recall that in Ukraine this very Sunday is their Easter, celebrated in damaged churches by damaged believers, divided families, Mothers and children torn apart from the man they love in a vicious war. The elderly in hiding and hoping for rescue without an access to a bathroom. We applaud the military bravery in defending their land against the aggressor. And we thank you that their values of freedom and democracy are our very values too. We thank you, Lord, in all this that you are on your throne. Hear our prayers of thanks. We thank you, Lord. Nearer home, we thank you for the health of our Queen Elizabeth on her 96th birthday. And we pray for her strength to rejoice in her platinum anniversary in June. We pray for Reverend Ian and the ministry team here, for the many who serve seen and unseen. We pray for the many children at the 11.30 service who need teachers in their junior church. We remember our outreach into the community, helping to welcome refugees, serving our young people, others in need, the lonely, those mourning, and those who have doubts in their faith from time to time. We pray for those who have completed the Alpha courses and those confirmed in the cathedral Scott and Holly, Ian and Elaine, Jenny, Billy and Julia. We thank you for them all. Hear our prayer of thanks. We thank you, Lord. We pray for those who need our prayers since they are sick or recovering. We pray for Peter and Sadie, for Pamela Mills, for Hazel Bunker, for Thomas Day, Elisa Carter, David Edwards, Jean Rodway, Rosemary Peak, and Sophie Carnahan. And we pray for those with us today who, who mourn. We pray for the mourning family of Gus Moody and Andrew Ward. So despite all our worries about the future, we take comfort from your word. We pray we should not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present our request to God. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent, and praiseworthy. Help us to think about such things.
as we live our lives for our servant King. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the faith of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand. The risen Christ came and stood in the midst of his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the risen Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I will also with you. We also offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work, bringing order from chaos and filling emptiness with life. Christ, your Son, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us, your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who births from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven 
singing the hymn of your unending glory. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all, for by the cross eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place forever. Making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the spirit who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine that overshadowed by his living presence, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of St. Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, yes. let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Faith.
Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And together in thanksgiving we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I frequently say, I hope you're sitting comfortably because there are several sets of bands to be read today. I published the bands of marriage between Stephen Robert Dodds and Rebecca Drain Street, both of the parish of St Matthew's Bridgemary, who wish to marry here by virtue of Stephen's qualifying connection. Between Claudio Maresca and Claire Elizabeth Link, both of this parish. Between William Butcher and Charlotte Wall, both of this parish. Between Alexander Leslie Shipman and Sarah Louise Wilson, both of this parish. Between David Shelton and Sharon Irene Appleby, both of the parish of Holy Trinity Ferrum, wish to marry here by virtue of David's qualifying connection between James Thomas Devono and Alice Grace Rose Chadwick, both of the parish of St Andrew Farlington, and wish to marry here by virtue of Alice's qualifying connection, between Ross Royland Chatwood and Katie Elizabeth Aslett, both of the parish of St Peter's Titchfield, and wish to marry here by virtue of Ross's qualifying connection between Andrew Peter Sturgis and Lucille Marie Claire Jean Torres, both of the parish of St Jude's in Southsea, who wish to marry here by virtue of Lucille's qualifying connection, between John Paul Bossut and Jessica Tappenden, both of this parish. These are all for the second time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And this was for the second time of asking. And as we sit, we say a prayer for these nine couples as they prepare for their wedding day, here or in other places, that they may be blessed by God in their preparation on their day and in their marriage in the years ahead. Amen. And so we stand to sing our final <coughs> hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia.
the Father by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. God the Son give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work among us, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.